Nancy did it for herself, but also for her boyfriend Justin. She wanted to achieve her beauty ideal in the most private part of her anatomy. Nancy had her labia shortened to improve the looks of her genitals. Her boyfriend Justin didn't quite agree first, but Nancy wanted to have the look she feels has become standard in New York. Yeah, it was very uncomfortable, like someone had made a comment about it and I became like, I guess aware and because of that I decided to go and have the surgery done and you know start researching it and that's how I came to my conclusion. Procedures that once were reserved for problems like incontinence or injuries related to childbirth are now being marketed by gynecologists as vaginal rejuvenation. Surgical techniques to enhance sexual satisfaction and to improve the looks of the genitals. Barbara D is 59 years old and mother of three children. In the past, she already had numerous body parts altered except for her most private part, her vagina. One of the most competent doctors for this affected modification is a New Yorker gynecologist, Dr. Robert Jason. Nancy and Justin have an appointment for a follow-up examination. Um, just like some women can have one breast much larger than another, um, or a leg that's a little longer than another, sometimes the labia are longer or thicker on one side. And, and it, it appears as a deformity in their mind. This was another woman who was very unhappy with her, the asymmetry and the unevenness of her labia minora. Other women, um, not until the, after they've given uh, childbirth, do the la labia get elongated. Bring the diameter of those, of, that ca of the vaginal cavity back to, instead of being a cylinder like this, it's a cylinder like this. 24 years old Nancy has no children yet, mm -hmm. but she felt she looked like she had given birth many times already. Or at least her labia was elongated and looked like it. She thought they were way too large. She researched on the internet for the newest solution for her problem. This is how she found Dr. Jason. You go and you look at Playboy and, you know, and, and videos and you see like what the norm is. And you're like, okay, so I'm definitely not in this normal range. And that's where you realize, okay, this is different. This is not what's on Playboy. This is not what's in Penthouse. And that gives you that basis to say, okay, this is normal or not normal. Yeah, my confidence is like through the roof now. I feel so much more comfortable sexually. You know, it's not, I don't have to, to be concerned with whether or not, you know, it's okay with him or, you know, he's just being nice. It's like now I can feel, okay, I'm just like everybody else. So sexually I'm like much more open and, and just comfortable. So that's better. $7,000 was a price Nancy paid to have her labia shortened. That makes her part of a small but constantly growing number of American women. Dr. Jason notices the increasing demand almost on a daily base. This is the fastest growing segment of cosmetic or plastic surgery, meaning uh, vaginal plastic uh, surgery, cosmetic vaginal plastic surgery. Um, so it, it's becoming more and more common. I'm getting busier all the time. Um, you know, right now I, I operate, I do approximately one to two of these cases a week now. Plastic surgery isn't something Barbara is afraid of. She has used many of the advanced surgery solutions to beautify and rejuvenate several body parts. The decision to have a vagina rejuvenated is part of her constant efforts to be the healthiest and most beautiful person she can be. I'm very healthy for my age and it, I realize when you get to a certain age that you only have so much time left and I want to enjoy the time as deep as I can. So I believe that this surgery will make life better. <laughs> Dr. Jason's efforts don't only beautify a woman's vagina. He also understands that changes after birth can make the sexual experience less pleasurable. In the surgery, Dr. Jason will tighten the birth canal because after three births, Barbara feels she has become too wide for her husband and for herself. And as I spoke to you before, Okay, instead of pre-pregnancy you were like this and post-pregnancy you're like this, what we're going to do in the surgery, we're going to bring the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments back together to pre-pregnancy um, uh, size and strength so it's approximate like this. So there will be more friction so you and your husband will be able to enjoy sexual laces 
like you used to. That is the reason why many women go for surgery, to give their men more pleasure. That, of course, alerts the critics, most outspoken America's famous sex therapist, Professor Betty Dodson. For years already, she preaches that women are going to extremes only to please their men. Now they're having plastic surgeries on their vaginas to make them tighter, so their men will have more fun. The orgasm comes from the clitoris, not the vagina. The vagina is for the males, for the man's pleasure. And that's okay, I got nothing against providing pleasure for the old man. You know what I mean? He works hard, he has to pay the bills, he comes home every night, once a week he'd like to have some sexual pleasure. Give him some. But that's not how women have, okay, that's not how most women have an orgasm. Nancy's boyfriend didn't consent to the surgery. For him, Nancy was perfect. Still, the 24-year-old went for the two-hour operation. Now even he says it was worth it. Sex has definitely become better just because, I mean, I'm confident and he sees it and he sees that I'm willing to and he kind of reacts off of me and we just, it's just better and more fun and we explore each other more and I'm more comfortable with him being in that region. So sex is definitely, <laughs> definitely much better. I tried to talk her out of it. I, I didn't think she needed it, so I tried to tell her, you know, it, that, it, you know, it's okay. I like it the way you are. You don't need to do this. And Barbara doesn't hesitate. She is experienced and she fully trusts Dr. Jason's team. This looks like a serious operation. How are we feeling? Are you looking forward to the results? Well, um, yeah. Um, when it's over, I'll be excited. <laughs> a little nervous, huh? Yes, okay. that's it. Yes. That's normal. Yes. As millions of women inject Botox, reshape noses, augment breasts, lift buttocks and suck away unwanted fat, a growing number are now exploring a new frontier, genital plastic surgery. The most popular of those is a tightening of the vaginal muscles called vaginoplasty. Barbara's surgery takes almost three hours. Dr. Jason works with a laser to assure the surgery is minimally invasive. The recovery period lasts four to six weeks, during which patients should refrain from rigorous activity, including intercourse. Well, she got what she desired. She had a three-finger breath of vaginal entroitis, both on the inside and the outside, and now it's two finger breaths. Plastic surgery has become a subject people talk openly about, more so than ever. Yet, talking about plastic surgery on your most private parts is for Barbara a bit disconcerting. She prefers to stay in a hotel nearby where no one asks questions. Of course I don't tell my children things like that. They never want their mother. Um, they want a conservative mother, I think. Yeah. Um, no. And then they really love me this way, if you know what I mean. Um, they want, you know, they, they love me and I, I, I give them examples. Um, so, yeah, um, no, I wouldn't tell them. The next morning, Barbara is already up and visits Dr. Jason for a checkup. And she may want to talk about a brand new procedure, the G-Spot Enhancement, a collagen shot to the G-Spot, which temporarily enlarges the area, making it easier to locate and giving women joy they have never felt before. But that procedure is about utility, not vanity. So Nancy, for now, enjoys her newfound satisfaction. <laughs>